Hey, and thank you so much for checking out episode two of Sound Ideas. If you haven't seen the first episode, which was Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon, then please go check it out. Hopefully it's something that could really help you. Um, but this episode, we're going to be talking about Let's Dance by David Bowie, and we're going to be focusing on the main verse parts, which was played by Noel Rogers. Really, really funky song, really, really funky guitar part, and there's a few things to take note of before we get into the actual delay settings and the chorus and all the other stuff that we're using here. And that's the rhythm. So we're not going to actually focus too much on the chords here, the actual voicings and the, what they are. If you want to know, send me a message or maybe find a separate video to explain that. But the rhythm is important because the delays are so rhythmic in this song, what we put in is really going to affect what we get out. So before we play the chords, there needs to be three strums on every chord and they need to fall in very set places. That is beat one, dead on beat one. The last sixteenth of beat one, so the uh, and then beat three itself. So beat one, the last sixteenth of one, and beat three. I've got no any no sound or anything on at the moment, and I'm just going to play the part completely dry just so you can hear that rhythm. Just on the first chord, it goes like this. And again. So make sure they're the three strums in those places. Um, when you're doing this song, otherwise all these delay settings are going to just give you a real mess. It's not going to sync up and have that really bouncy, cool, funky feeling about it. So, a quick note on the actual guitar I'm using today. Uh, I'm using a humbucker equip guitar, but I have a coil tap on, middle position, so it's kind of like a telly sound. Um, I'm pretty sure Noel Rogers would have used his, his hit maker, the white Strat, uh, maybe in one of the outer face positions. So if you do have a Strat, grab that. If you don't, humbucker guitar with the, uh, the split uh, is probably a good way to go. Okay, let's dive into these actual settings then. So we're going to start off with the kind of boring -y stuff, but a little bit of compression. Really, really helps out the clean sound. So here's without it. And then here's with it. Quite subtle. If I let the chord ring and then turn the compression on, you'll, you'll hear the level come up a little bit. And it's just squashing just a touch. Here's without it. Here's with it. So hopefully you could hear the level come up there. If I just head over to the Kemper, I can just show you the settings for that. So just a little bit of squash, not much intensity, and attack, um, just to give it that, that little extra punch on each of the chords. I should say, although I'm using a Kemper today to show you these settings, if you don't have a Kemper, this still can be achieved if you follow the uh, the rough settings on whatever you have, individual pedals, Boss, Strymon, whatever it might be, um, or an Axefex or a Kemper or a Helix. Um, if you do have a Kemper, then great. There's a couple of little quirks that I'll, I'll have to show you as we go along to get this sound. But the really important thing is that you can run two separate delays. That's the crux. If you can't do all the other stuff, it doesn't matter. Just get those two delays and you're going to be 90% of the way there. So. That's the compression, just a little tiny bit to help the punch of each chord, but not much. So let's move on. Reverb, kind of building up the order of importance here. So the reverb of this song, I'm gonna leave the compressor on by the way. Here's the reverb, and I'm using a small room reverb. Again, I'll show you the settings on the Kemper. 25% mix. So it's still quite dry, that small room is more just kind of a little bit of ambience. I think too much reverb here will get in the way of the delays and sonically take up too much space in the context of the mix. And that's really what it's all about here. I know I'm showing you these sounds completely isolated so you can really hear them, but we're aiming to be playing this either recording or live in a band as well. So we've got to consider those other instruments and what space we're taking up. So the reverb, just quickly just run through the settings, 25% mix. Everything else I haven't touched. Um, Pre-delay is set to 81. And yeah, that's it. So a very basic kind of reverb sound. Here's with the reverb and without it. So here's without. And here's with. Okay, so not a lot of reverb. All right, so there's compression, there's reverb. So here's the big two, here's the two delays. So, just for those Kemper users out there, and maybe it applies to Axe Effects or, 
or I don't know, but I have never used it, used it um, that you need the ability to run two separate delays. So on the Kemper, that can get a little tricky because there's only one delay slot. If you're not familiar with the Kemper, over here is our modulation, delay and reverb section. So I've actually engaged the delay and put set one delay up there. But then to get around it, to get two separate delays, I've also used the mod uh, bank and I've put a delay on there. So let's just talk about them in the order that I've put them. So I'm using the single delay parameter and the mix is set quite high, 72%. But the, here's the most important setting and that is the time of the delay in milliseconds and the type. So this delay is an eighth note delay and on the Kempo, if you press the second soft button up here, you can see the value actually change and it will show you, show you the value in either milliseconds or then eighth or sixteenth or quarter note or whatever you set it to. So this needs to be an eighth delay so just here, and if I uncheck that second button, then it says 262 in milliseconds. 262 milliseconds, that's the really important one there. So eighth of delay, 262 milliseconds. Not a lot of feedback, 16%, so there's, there's a few repeats there, but not a crazy amount. That's going to be done by the other delay. So here's what that sounds like. So I've now got compression, reverb, and this first delay on. Sounds like this. Here's that again. So very kind of slap back, kind of bouncing delay. Almost gives it straight back after the initial attack. So that's delay number one. Now for the longer delay, delay number two. Just turn that. Okay, turn the first one off. So here's the longer delay. This is a quarter note delay. And again on the Kemper, if you jump to the uh, second soft button, you can see it says quarter. And if I jump back again, you can see just here, five to seven milliseconds, 17% feedback, which is pretty much the same as before. A little less mix this time, 60%. If you go half and half on the mix between the two delays to start with, and then kind of dial it in in there, what you think might need a little bit more um, and a little bit less, get in the ballpark. So, quick recap, this second delay is a quarter note delay, five to seven on your milliseconds, and it sounds like this. So I have compression, reverb and this second delay on. So much kind of choppier, more repeats, more spread out. So the space between those repeats, that is what's going to be filled up by the eighth note delay that we had before. So I'm just going to quickly flip flop between the two delays and then I'll put them both on to complete the sound. So here's delay number one. Here's delay number two. And then here's both together with the compression, with the reverb, so the whole picture involved now. Second chord. Third chord. And last chord. Play that right. There we go, much better. So hopefully you can hear how those two delays are working together. If I just demonstrate what we said before about the rhythm, if I put some extra muted strums in and kind of change the place of those strums a little bit, the delays start to bounce back in the wrong place and it ruins the effect rhythmically. So here's the right chords with the right sound, but the wrong actual rhythm part. So too many muted strums in that there. So really, really exercise restraint here. Just three strums on every chord and you'll be in the right place. So there's the whole picture. Compression, an eighth note delay, a quarter note delay, and a little bit of reverb will get you there. I hope that makes sense. Get stuck in, dial up the sound, have some fun with it, get playing, and I'll see you in the next episode. Any comments and questions, please just drop them below and I'll get back to you. But thank you for checking this out. See you next time.